All right, y'all. We are live on this beautiful, beautiful Wednesday. Blessings to everybody in the name of Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah. Even if you are not religious, well, I still pray everybody watching and listening is super blessed. And man, looks like the dollar is taking a massive dump right now. We've got altcoins pumping like crazy and Bitcoin is still consolidating in this triangle. This bullish, honestly, ascending triangle bull flag pennant thingamajig with our breakout target at our next major resistance coming in at approximately approximately $49 major major resistance major bullish target on Bitcoin okay very interesting yesterday's bottom did actually look pretty nice we're gonna get into that I was hoping for lower here guys we still might see lower I'm still actually hoping for lower looking to open up a freshy a fresh long trade on Bitcoin shout out to everybody in the chat right now shout out to Kawin do he says CVD and OI looks great yes very bullish CVD divergences shout out to Pike 379 shout out to GL he says good evening peeps let's pump Bitcoin like a Volcano eruption shout out to infinite wisdom can everyone in here smash the like button who's long I'm long win Lambo Every day is a Lambo day for Bitcoin, guys. Shout out to everybody in the chat. God bless you. Shout out to Bybit. Shout out to Zoomex. Shout out to Market Cipher. And shout out to Dolores with the dang uneven butt cheeks with the coffee. Mm. With cream in it, guys. I never drink coffee with cream. As you can see, so there's some strange things going on today, all right? Your boy's wearing a, a jacket, my hat's not backwards, a coffee with cream in it. What in the world? I never drink coffee, not on stream. Mmm. It's so good, though. I love it. I love it. All right. Shout out to Jason Owen. Shout out to Melchizedek Lockwood. The way the live stream ended yesterday, hoping all was okay. Yes, thank you, guys. Everything was... <laughs> Everything is okay. All right, everything's okay. Shout out to Bitcoin. Shout out to Bitcoin. Shout out to Raza. Shout out to Revy. Shout out to Pedro Ramos Pinto. Am I sick? No, I'm not sick. I was just outside for a long time in the cold. And I'm still very cold, you know? So I got this hot coffee right here. I put some, some cream in it because, you know, why not, right? Mmm. Yeah, it's good stuff. Shout out to Save the Republic USA. Shout out to Bully Barry. Shout out to Father Time. Yeah, I'm okay, guys. Pretty soon I'm going to have to take this jacket off because, you know, it's getting hot in here, so I'm going to have to take off all my jacket. All right. Whew. This jacket is warm, I'll tell you guys. It's warm. All right, back to good old Market Cipher. All right, let's get the hat backwards going. Woo! Shout out to the hat hair. All righty, guys. Man, I know, right? I'm a walking billboard. I know. What a crazy thing. All right, let's talk about Bitcoin, and then we're going to get into these altcoins, guys, because as, as we know, Ethereum is absolutely pumping like crazy. This is the, the Bitcoin-Ethereum pair here, and... Uh, I think we have a significant, significant development on the Bitcoin ETH pair. All right, first of all, this is the weekly time frame here. And uh, this this is something that uh, we've been looking at this since literally 2021, 2022, mostly. Um, if you're an OG of the channel, you'll remember this chart that I no longer have marked up. But we were looking at this right here right this this cup and handle pattern and we've got ourselves the the handle right here now the handle is a little bit extended all right kind of like the handle on this cup right here okay a little bit extended Dolores now speaking of Dolores we can see a very interesting similarity between what's on the chart and at this literal cup and handle that I have right here okay do you see 
what is on this cup and handle here is the price action is coming down lower and lower and look at the uneven butt cheeks on this woman okay so if we take a look at what is happening here at this cup and handle pattern okay literally for the first time for the first time since this handle has been forming here on the weekly all right we are printing the uneven butt cheek pattern here the bullish divergence aka the uneven butt cheek pattern we have a very deep left butt cheek followed by a not so deep right butt cheek right here you know and this is a very bullish pattern as we know in fact we could just go and superimpose these cheeks onto the chart and uh, see wow would you look at how perfectly it matches it's, it's crazy, actually. It really is crazy. Wow. And so, in my opinion, this is actually marking a significant change in the market because we, we are starting to see, finally, uh, the potential breakout of this, of this Bitcoin-Ethereum pair here. Now, the last time we saw a significant move on the Bitcoin-Ethereum pair was really during the last bull market, right? November 2020 was really when we started to was really when we started that really big run up, right? That massive bull market run up. So I'd say we, we very well may be right around this area. Like if we're gonna compare market cycles, we are right around this zone here, right? To the, er, the beginning of 2020, just before the Bitcoin halving, we were consolidating the Bitcoin Ethereum pair and it led to a pretty big breakout, retesting the massive move to the upside, culminating in the top of the bull market right around the fall of 2021. That's that's pretty crazy. Wow. That is pretty crazy. Now look at this. If we are going to break out of this cup and handle, we are potentially going to see one Ethereum be worth 0.15 Bitcoin. That's crazy. That is absolutely insane. So this is a real potential here. And I think this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning because a weekly bullish divergence, let's not forget how powerful a weekly bullish divergence is, right? Look at what happened when Bitcoin got a weekly bullish divergence. It happened right here. That was the bottom, right? That was the bottom. And so we're seeing that right now on the Bitcoin Ethereum pair. So get ready, guys, because I, I do believe 2024 is going to be a very bullish year, not only for Bitcoin, but we're going to see a lot of these altcoins like Ethereum really start to outperform Bitcoin, just like Ethereum did during the last bull market, right? When Bitcoin was doing all this stuff, Ethereum was in a nonstop, crazy, any every Ethereum short, you got liquidated before you even hit the short button. All right, that's pretty crazy. So, guys, shout out to everybody in the chat. We got about 700 people in here. If we can get 1,000 likes before the stream has been going on for half an hour, we will give away 1,000 USDT. Uh, shout out to Crypto Poyo in the chat. Shout out to Siggy. Yet, yeah, remember to like the stream. 46K is coming. Could really be. Depends on the ETF. Um... Yeah, so look, the ETF news is coming out. I'll, I'll tell you, I will tell you guys what I hope actually happens with with Bitcoin. Okay, if I could choose anything in the world right now for to, to happen with Bitcoin, it would be this. I would actually want to come down just a little bit lower here, just to uh, just to snag this low. All right just to snag that low into the trend line. And then I want to break out of this. And I want to hit the target of around forty nine dollars to $50,000. The reason why I want to hit this target is because, whoops, I, I deleted my chart there. The reason why I want to hit this target is because that forty nine dollars to $50,000 level is, well, it's a, it's a massive area of resistance, right? So if we, if we just take a look at the weekly time frame. For Bitcoin and really zoom out and just kind of get the perspective of what's going on here we can see that when we look at this right 49 
thousand dollars is the value area high of this massive range the target also of our of our triangle right the target of our triangle breakout is this very key area of resistance confluence with the fibonacci golden pocket retest okay so we know that the etf news is probably going to be coming out very very soon it will probably if they approve the etf result in a short-term pump right into massive resistance where i i think a lot of people are going to start longing the top which I think is going to give us a nice pullback to either $38,000 at the high volume node of the range or preferably for myself, a move back down to around $31,000, right? Because if we come back down to $31,000, this in my opinion is showing indeed the bull market is getting ready to start because we have our bear market rally. We have a really nice healthy pullback like we always get support resistance flip what used to be the floor and then flipped into the ceiling is now once again the floor because look at the breakout here this is unsustainable price action it's unsustainable guys we have no support we've we have not tested any kind of base it would have been much healthier if we did something like this where you know we get the breakout then we get a little bounce and then we range for a little, grab the lows and then grab the highs and then make a higher low and then blast off. But no, none of that. One day, one daily candle, right? That's, we're on the weekly, but this is literally one daily candle, bullish engulfing and then just all this liquidity down below, right? So that's what I honestly, what I, what I would prefer to happen right now with Bitcoin. Is that going to happen? Probably not because this is what I hope happens, right? So, but if I could, if I could choose my plan to trade, it would be get the pump up to 50K, maybe a little bit higher, get a large pullback down to 31K, maybe a little bit lower. What we want to do is we want to convince people that Bitcoin's going higher. And then we want to convince people that Bitcoin's going lower. And then we can enter into the bull market, right? That, that would be beautiful. And if we just look, you know, historically, at how Bitcoin behaves right before the halving, we see very similar things always happening, right? We see very similar things always happening. So let's go to the weekly and take a look at what happened last time before the halving, right? Big, th this was the top of the bull market. This was the bottom of the bear market. Massive bear market rally, massive pullback, and then boom. Now let's ignore the vid all right vidco 91 is what we call it here vidco 91 if we ignore vidco 91 we we established a base right here in 2018 at around 6k we lost the base we came back up into it okay we established a base a floor we lost the floor we came back above the floor if we ignore the capitulation wick we pretty much just came back down to test the floor here before the big move to the upside, right? We still got a very significant pullback from the top of the bear market rally, not quite hitting the all time high. And then we got a big pullback. Now notice what's happening right now. We established a, a nice base. All right. We established a nice base. We fell below just like we did in the last cycle. We came above, right? And just around 50K, we know we have massive resistance, not quite hitting the bull market high. And then we can get our pullback, all right? So if there's no black swan events, this is the level that we would be looking to test before we head off into uh, the ionosphere and the, uh, the exo, is there something called the exosphere? I don't know, all right? There's all these different spheres until one second you're in a not vacuum and then literally one millimeter later you pop into a vacuum you're gonna have a vacuum and a non-vacuum literally existing right next to each other what an amazing crazy thing and um yeah so and we see this even going back to these days as well right because we've got ourselves the top of the bull market the bottom of the bear market it's a little bit different in this situation it's a little bit different, but still kind of similar because we establish somewhat of a base right here. Now, remember, this is Bitcoin is much less volatile, right? We establish a little bit of a base and it happens much quicker here 
But we get a nice rally, come up above the base. We come back down to retest the base before off to the stratosphere. So, you know, that's kind of what I was what I was hoping to happen here on the Bitcoin price, right? Doesn't mean it's guaranteed to happen, guys. That's the thing. So let's come down to the hourly because I do think it's important that we understand the local context of Bitcoin. Now, right here, I have marked out the two most key levels that we need to be aware of as far as swing trades go. All right, 47 to, I would say around $49,000. We could even make this a little bit higher here, right? This is gonna be major resistance, 47 to 49, major support, 37 to 38K. These are gonna be major, major targets because if we're gonna be looking at this thing as a more of a symmetrical triangle, well, we're gonna be able to say that our, our target to the upside is right around that $49,000. Our target to the downside is right around that $37,000 level, right? These are our two major levels that, that we have in the higher term time frames. Now, locally here, this is what we got going on, and this is how I'm personally looking to trade Bitcoin. Well, we have ourselves the range, right? The range high, the range low. Now, in this range here, we came up, we made the high around 44,500 smack ronies, right? We took the high, gave us the drop to the downside, right? This is the short trade that we gave in the Casper crew, actually still holding the short trade from that first high. Literally from the exact top, I'm short because we were ready and waiting with the idea, with the plan in advance, right? And then as we start to range within this triangle, we see the next opportunity for a short trade. And that is also one of the short trades I'm currently in right now. Actually, am I in it? No, my account's logged out. I am in a short trade as well, but this account got logged out. So, so oh well. <laughs> so, I, you can't see the trade, but I'm in a trade from this as well. And then uh, that trade obviously has played out. And currently, right now, Bitcoin is getting a little bit of a bounce from a pretty key level of support all right we are getting a bounce from if we go back to this chart here the reason bitcoin got the bounce yesterday is because we came down to a key level which was the fibonacci golden pocket retest from the low to the high right we dipped down right into that fibonacci golden pocket now i didn't long this even though it happened yesterday on stream but if you watched the stream yesterday you know that I was looking at this for a bounce. In fact, in the VIP live stream yesterday morning in the Casper crew, this was the support zone to look for a long right at that golden pocket. I didn't take it. I was hoping we would come a little bit lower, but we did come down to that Fibonacci golden pocket. And if we look at market cipher, we actually see something quite bullish here. All right. Actually, this low as much as I want to come down a little bit lower, like I said, to retest that trend line, this low right now does look very bullish. And here's why. When we look at what has happened throughout the entirety of this, what appears to be an ascending triangle, every time we come down to make a low, we're actually seeing the big players in the market defend these levels and push the price more to the upside, right? Because things do start to look bearish, right? We cannot deny the fact that, um, what happened here was pretty bearish looking, right? We got we got the upside down Sam Bankman Freed bearish man boob market cipher pattern right up here, right? When we came to take that high, we saw market cipher B getting lower, money flow and momentum waves getting lower over time on market cipher. This is a very, very bearish pattern. It usually leads to a significant move to the downside. We did get a move to the downside, okay? After we got the move to the downside, we came back up for a retest and rejected from the Fibonacci golden pocket right around here, okay? The Fibonacci golden pocket, when you get a retest into that, it's, it's pretty bearish, right? But when we came back down to these lows, we actually saw something quite interesting, which is the following. If we take a look at the order flow chart here, we can see that as we're consolidating in this triangle, we're seeing more and more short trades opening up. This white line down here, this is called the cumulative volume delta. 
And this is telling us what direction are traders opening up new trades in. If this white line is getting lower, it means more and more short trades are opening. If the line is getting higher, it means more and more long trades are opening. So during this last run up here, we could see, wow, this is new longs entering into the market. Look at all the new longs coming in because the white line is getting higher and higher. Well, now that we're consolidating in this triangle, we can see, wow, look at all the short trades that are coming in here. But you know what? Price is not getting lower and lower, even though there's a lot of short trades coming in. What does this mean? This is called bullish absorption. This means the retail traders are entering into shorts, but the whales, the market maker, whatever you want to call them, they're actually filling up big long orders at these lows and they're, and they're defending these levels. This low right here, although the chart looks super dang bearish at the time, this low right here was defended by bigger players. And also yesterday, it really looks like this low is also being defended by bigger players, which means if we get another drop down here, I'm going to be very, very bullish. If, if we take this low again, I'm going to be extremely bullish because now we have our third tap onto this trend line here. And we are seeing that, man, a lot of people are shorting this. Price is not able to break this trend line. So if we get a bounce from here, I'm going to be longing. I'm going to be longing from there. I don't know if we're going to get it. The, no, something else that looks very bullish about the bottom we made yesterday here is the uneven butt cheek pattern on the one hour time frame. Okay. Not only are we seeing whales absorb the retail shorts, but we're also seeing the uneven butt cheek pattern on market cipher B. So right here, when we made this low at the last area where we saw lots of whale absorption, the price made a lower low market cipher B made a higher low on the momentum with the money flow as well. Right, we're seeing that same exact thing happening right here. Yesterday, price made the lower low, market cipher B made that higher low, and we have the Ben Armstrong Bit Boy butt cheeks down here as well. Right, we've got these big Bit Boy green dots down here, two of them in a row with the uneven butt cheek pattern. That's called Bit Boy butt cheeks. That's a very strong signal, especially on the one hour time frame. So this this bottom to me does look bullish. And we're going to have to wait and see because I do believe the ETF news is going to act as a catalyst to give Bitcoin that one last move. Um, and if I could bet on something, I have a feeling it could lead to a pump and dump scenario, right? A pump and dump scenario because right now everybody's waiting. Nothing really happening here. When that news comes out, I mean, look at what happened when the fake news came out, guys. There was fake news. That happened a while ago that the ETF had been approved. This was what got we got, right? We got a big, huge wick to the upside. It was about a 10% move. And this is the one hour time frame, right? A 10% move up and back down within one hour. So we know that our next target for Bitcoin is coming in at around that $49,000 zone. That's really not that far away from here. Let's see. That's about 10%, 10, 11, 12%. So it would not surprise me if we get a massive wick right into resistance. And then we actually start to see things kind of, let's say, get a healthy pullback, right? Because that's really what we need here. We do need a healthy pullback. So yeah, so right now for Bitcoin, for me, there's two key levels locally to be aware of. First of all, we do have the trend line just below us. So dipping back down to here, could be very bullish. And then right now, I would also say we do have just above us from the high to the low, the Fibonacci golden pocket retest coming in right around here, right around that high volume node. So I'd say we have resistance around 43.6. We have support around 41.3 within this triangle. Okay. As long as we are trading within this triangle here, I'm not talking about breaking out or breaking down, but as long as we are trading within this thing, 43.6, 43.7, key resistance, 41.3-ish, very key sport. About to take a sip from my uneven butt cheek mug. Yeah. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Shout out to Seymour Liddy. 
Cabrera. Can we take a look at XRP? Yeah, we can take a look at XRP. We can take a look at XRP. We'll have to take a look at XRP. Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. Let's see. We've we've been live for 25 minutes. If everybody likes the video right now, we can do a $1,000 giveaway. Shout out to the Dusty Hunt. Trade in Bitcoin. What do you say? About to do a $1,000 giveaway. And oh snap, look down there. Let me take a peek. Market Slifer B got the uneven cheeks. Dolores at the diner, bringing your coffee, trading the Bitcoin, getting kind of saucy, got the candles going down, the price goes up, we got the uneven butt cheeks right in the cup, yo, now we're coming back down to the lows, Sam Bankman Freed, right on the nose, got the upside down man boobs, going really hard, going really fast, and I'm going really far, yo, crooked man boobs, what a disgrace, Look at this look right on his face. Got the upside down hair all over the place. Looking like an upside down frowny face. Yo, check it out. Got some guys in the chat. Swedish man says bars about that. Dave wine with the roses. Tano pack. He says, damn, you're great, man. Keep going with the brack. Huh. Here we go. Joe Potter in the house. Shane Stein. Hope you didn't see a mouse. Devon Osiris. Talking about the butt cheeks, doing it every day when I'm looking at the nut sheeps. Up. Oh. I don't know what a nut sheep is, but you know, sometimes when you're a white guy trying to freestyle, you just make up words. All right, let's take a look at XRP. All right, we'll look at it. We'll look at XRP. Now here's the thing, XRP, man, we haven't done analysis on XRP in a, in a minute, in a long minute. I'm gonna delete everything here. So here's the deal, you're either bullish or not on XRP. I, I don't like I don't like the chart because we've had such low volatility, and really the the thing I don't like about it is. Well, we haven't really shown any major signs of strength here, honestly. I mean, we haven't. And this, to me, is an ascending channel, which looks like, it looks like she wants to break down, man. I don't, I don't want to say that, but I don't know. I don't know. This, this, this is the most boring chart to me. What, what do we want to look at with XRP? I don't see anything exciting about XRP. XRP is going to pump in the bull market just like every other altcoin that's in the top 10 or whatever, right? Everything's going to go great. It's going to do well. It's going to pump. I don't see anything tradable about it, though. The only thing I see tradable about XRP right now is the potential that this, it will break to the upside. And if it does, well, let's see. We're looking at uh, uh, we're looking at basically coming up to the to the same high that we made over here, coming back up to these highs. So, I'm not really a fan of trading XRP. It's been doing nothing since November. So, could, yeah, could it pump? Yeah, it could pump. Could it dump? It could dump. I mean, from the low, we're up quite a bit here, right? It's up 150% from the low. It's just like Bitcoin. Bitcoin's up 150% from the low as well. So, it will be the last to pump. That's kind of how I feel too. Like, if you're into XRP, I hope you have a lot of XRP. All right, let's take a look at COTI. COTI. This one's a little bit more exciting. All right. Now, Cotty. We were looking at this potentially happening here. Didn't happen, all right? This was a... Uh, this was when we were finding resistance at these highs saying, look, we've already pumped. A good opportunity would be a pullback. We're not getting the pullback. But now we're flipping major resistance. So this changes the game. Let's remove all these drawings here. So this is Cotty. 
or also, hang on. <clears throat> the old Cotty, you know what I mean, my chap, my lad, bruv. Talking about Cotty right here, okay? For some reason, Cotty is one of those altcoins from the UK. I don't know if you knew that. It's true, all right? This thing's probably gonna pump. I can't tell if, uh, maybe I'm a little bit Aussie there. All right, mate. Cotty's gonna pump, mate. Crikey with the croc, mate. But no, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to be. I'm not trying to be an Aussie. I'm just trying to be a regular old Brit. It's not going the best today. Sometimes I got it on point. Sometimes I don't. All right. Well, let's pull this thing off log scale. This, this is definitely bullish. So right now we are flipping major support resistance. So this is a very key level at 7.4 cents. All right. Let's put this on the chart here. This is a very very key level. Um, for me right now. Is the daily time frame because we're actually breaking this resistance right here i would say we could we could see much more upside on this we could as long as bitcoin doesn't uh doesn't dump on us we are now back up above the value area so our next major target based on volume here is going to be 10 cents all right we could see this thing come to 10 cents based on volume and volume theory, 10 cents is our next target. Let's pull some fibs here. We'll pull one from this last significant high. Wow, yeah. Okay, so look at this, guys. You know, we have ourselves from the last significant high that we made back here in June 2022. Uh, we have the Fibonacci Golden Pocket Retest, the value area, uh, the point of control of the range. That is a move of about, that's another 40% to the upside. Or another 40% to the upside. Let's go to the four hour. Actually, let's take a look at Market Cipher on the daily here. Looks pretty bullish to me, honestly. Um, we got bullish divergences here. Very nice looking bottom. Let's check out the weekly. Okay, so the weekly even has bullish divergences down here. So when, when you see the bullish div on the weekly, guys, that is a very, very strong, this is the bottom signal, all right? So that really means, in my opinion, it's a it's a buy the dip kind of coin, right? The bottom's in the weekly bull div. That's that's a very strong signal. It's very unlikely we take those lows. Mm. Man, Dolores really she she makes a good cup of coffee. I have to say. All right. Yeah. So it's very unlikely we take those lows. So here's let's go to the four hour. And let's zoom in. Let's see if we can't find something here. So we didn't get a pullback. We're getting a breakout. We've already gotten a pretty nice retest as well. So there's a few ways to look at this. I mean, there's a few ways to look at this, right? Um, Man, okay, so we've got ourselves even here on the cotty. We've got we've got something like this as well here, right? We got ourselves like a little bit of an inverted head and shoulder pattern here. Let's see if we could get a target of this, all right? Take it from the low to the high. We just get the extension. Yeah, so we haven't hit that target yet. So here's what I'm thinking, because here's just because I know we have a lot more upside right now, having flipped this, it doesn't necessarily give me a trade setup, right? It doesn't necessarily give me a trade setup. What would be an ideal setup for me right now? I would want to see, let's pull a fib from this last, last low to the high. Mmm, mmm. I mean, really, for me, if we come back down into this area here at all, this area right here, this would be the place that I would look to get in on it. Because that to me is like a real solid retest. If we go to the daily time frame, we haven't gotten a retest, right? We haven't really gotten the retest on the daily. So if we see a daily candle dip into this zone, man, that could be pretty nice. Are we going to get that? I don't know. But if we do, it gives us a really clear plan because it's all about having a good plan right a good clear plan where we know 
our stop loss goes below those lows, and we know our target is up here. That's a beautiful 6 to 1, 7 to 1 risk reward ratio setup. A potential 40% gain. Now you could say, all right, I'm going to just come in here. But then we have to think to ourselves, if we if we enter now, assuming that we have this move to the upside, that's only a 2.5 to 1 risk reward ratio. Is that worth it? That's something for you to decide up to your own trading strategy, right? What I mean by risk reward ratio is every trade that we take where we know because every trade we take, you need to know in advance, where's your stop loss? Where's your take profit? And it's going to give you this right here, risk reward ratio. This is telling you how much more reward are you potentially going to get on your trade than you're risking. So let's say you're risking 1% of your stack on this trade. You're going to make 2.68% on your investment if your take profit gets hit and you're going to lose 1%. So it's 2.6 times more reward than risk, right? But for some people, this is a great trade. They'll say anything more than a two to one, I will take. But for other people like myself, I'd rather have something like this, where this is an eight to one, right? Where if I'm taking trades, I have an eight to one risk reward ratio. That means I can take fewer trades and be profitable. It also means I can lose more trades and be profitable. Because if I'm gaining 8% for every 1% I'm risking, I could lose six trades in a row, win two, and be in massive profit, right? I could be up 10% on my entire account by losing six trades and winning two, right? So, isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? That's a 75% lose rate, and I'm still profitable because I'm waiting for those setups that give me the best bang for the buck. You know, me and my wife were talking, where'd that phrase come from, bang for the buck? Is that, does that, it sounds a little dirty actually, you know? I don't know, I don't know the origin of that. Maybe someone in the chat knows. Shout out to Tom Crown, my man. Shout out to Tom Crown in the chat. Shout out to Tom Crown again in the chat. Shout out to Josh Brown with the super chat. Shout out to Droski33 with the super chat. We'll take a look at Filecoin, man. Filecoin, that's a good one. Shout out to Tom Crown. Tom Crown, make sure to go subscribe to Tom Crown because he's a legit crypto trader. Make sure to follow him on Twitter, on X or whatever. I don't know. I'm not hip like these young these young kids. All right, shout out to Tom Crown got the treadmill desk. That's what's up, bro. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Kadi is based in Israel, not the UK. I didn't know that. That's funny. Houston tries to be British. It comes out as Indian. That's funny. Bro, you're, you see, I'm not coordinated enough to chart and walk either, which is why I make so many typos and like weird things. All right, so shout out to the super chats in the chat. All right, we're going to take a look. Uh, all right, we're going to take a look at C-E-K-K-E. -K -K -E. Is this, this it? I don't know. Spooky swap. Is this it? Oh man, I'm not qualified to do analysis on this. I'm sorry, I'm not qualified, but thank you for the super chat. I mean, I'm I'm not qualified for this, man. <laughs> the only actually, I actually I do see an opportunity here. All right. I, now, I don't know anything about this thing. I don't even know what it means that it's wrapped phantom on phantom. I don't even know what that means, I'll be honest with you. Because I don't know anything about, like, I'm, I'm a technical trader. I don't I don't know about the blockchain and all this. Layer one, layer two, layer this, layer that, third gen, AI, mixed reality. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just a technical trader. I just look at the chart. So I do see that we have these lows right here and right here and so if we come down below the lows and then close the candle back above the lows well that's called the swing failure pattern but other than that you know it's wrapped bubblegum wrap freestyle wrap on phantom i don't know but thank you for the super chat appreciate it man all right let's see what else we got here 
Filecoin? Yeah, let's do some Filecoin TA. We'll do some Filecoin TA. What's Bitcoin doing right now? She's doing nothing, guys. Man, all these days, Bitcoin doing nothing, all right? Wow. All right, Filecoin right now, super dang bullish on the daily. Okay, so here's the deal. We were talking about Filecoin a little while ago. I'm gonna start on the high on the higher term time frames here. Okay. My overall thoughts on fill, all right? You're trying to fill a void in your life, you need some fill coin, all right? Not financial advice. But if we're just gonna look at this as far as upward potential, right? If we're looking to build a portfolio as far as upward potential, I mean the upward potential on this is thousands of percents, right? Let's let's just say 3500 percent all right what does that mean that means if we are accumulating fill fill and lil in this triangle before the breakout this is a good long-term spot play honestly I, I feel that this is a solid long-term spot play right when we're looking at upward potential versus downward potential we have 56 times more upward potential than downward potential. All right, if we actually take it to this wick here, we have almost 70 times more upward potential than downward potential, even if we put in a new low, all right? Now, if we do put in a new low here, we're gonna have a double drive of bullish divergence on the weekly, which is extremely bullish. So, in my opinion, this is a great coin to be buying now. Even, and when I say buy now, I don't mean ex explode your whole load. That didn't come out right. Hang on. I don't, <laughs> I don't mean, okay, hang on. Let me, I, I, I need a drink after that. Whew, getting a little flushed and embarrassed in here, man. Look, you don't need to blow. <laughs> you don't need to deploy all your capital, all right? But you could say, look, right now, objectively speaking, even even now we're buying low on this thing. If we get some pullbacks here, great, right? As long as, we, as long as we're trading in the triangle, we can't say that there's any sign of strength here on the chart, right? We're back at the trend line now and the value area high of the range. We might get a, get a pullback here, right? Come down to point of control and then break out, or who knows, maybe we come back down to value area low trend line and then break out, whatever the case, if we're accumulating here, we're accumulating before the big breakout. After the breakout, then I say it's a different story. Then I'd say, maybe I'd say, yeah, well, we're breaking out. Well, you know, you don't want to miss the boat because it is a, a solid looking asset here. But this is one of the ones I'd be interested actually in, in accumulating right now, like right now. And then if this is a long term play for the bull run, you can't go wrong. You cannot go wrong on this. All right. Now, more locally. Let's get a little bit more local. We are simply trading in a triangle and we are coming up to resistance, right? So locally now, if I was looking to enter into a leveraged long trade on this, I would say, well, it's not the best time. If I was looking for a short term play on file coin, I would want to see a sign of strength here. What would a sign of strength entail? It would entail a breakout and then a retest, just like what we were looking at on, on the Koi, right? We're looking at the Koi, the Israeli coin, the Koi. All right, it's a nothing burger, says people in the chat. It's just a, a UK CBDC, nothing to really pay attention to, all right? But we're just here to look at the chart. We're not here to talk about the fundamentals of the coins. But I mean, in my opinion, with Filecoin, right? If we got a breakout, we got a retest right here, that would be a long opportunity because now we've got ourselves a sign of strength, right? Sign of strength with with a F sound. Because over in the UK, we don't say the TH sound like you Americans do. No, we say a sign of strength. We got the F sound. Or maybe that's South African. I don't know because I confuse all you guys together. South African, Australian, British. You all sound the same to me. All right. But here's the thing, right? We get a little breakout retest here. That, 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 that allows us to get in on a sign of strength 
Instead of longing into resistance, we're longing support resistance flip. And then I'd say based on how altcoins are running, right? Because again, when we're looking for breakouts right now, we're assuming altcoin season's still going, right? Altcoin season goes until it don't. It just, she goes until she don't, right? It's like everything else in life. I would target the golden pocket around 15, $16, right? If we get that breakout and retest, this is my short-term play. Long-term play, accumulate, hold for a new high. Short-term play, long a breakout and retest and shoot for the next major support resistance flip at the golden pocket around $15, $16, right? Or at least $11 TP1 at, at the high of this triangle here, which is still in and of itself a really nice trade, right? That's a 75% gain right there, all right? So a TP2, $18, TP1, $12. That's how I would look at that. All right. Shout out to J-Boy Bullish. We got all signs of strength here in the Nikoti. All right, so shout out to Cryptic, Cryptic Snipers also from the UK. Um, yeah, someone correct me. All right, so, so Sniper... Cryptic sniper from the UK, but do you guys pronounce the F sound or the TH sound? If you're saying things like uh, strength, let me know. I'm trying to work on my accent. All right, let's see. Did we get any other super chats in here? I don't want to miss the super chats. Shout out to D, the dude, 88. Thank you so much for the super chat, man. You want to look at Casper? All right, we could look at Casper. Casper. We'll look at Casper. Right. Guys, make sure to like the stream because uh, we got a lot of people in here, not a lot of likes. All right, shout out to Bernie. He says, accent is good, bruv. <laughs> what could I say, bruv? Thank you. It means a lot to me. It really does. All right, shout out to Crypto Coons in the chat. He says, join the Casper crew. All right. The accent reminds me of Dick Van Dyke. Never got a little bit of an older kind of a vibe to it. All right, Casper token. Oh wow, okay. Let's check it out. All right, so we do have a a local sign of strength with an F. Um no bullish divs here though. Hang on. Is this on log scale? Let's put it back on log. So, we've got the range here. Wow, I mean, wow. That So, you know, this is really nice. Like, we got a nice bounce from the Fibonacci Golden Pocket here. Daily looks questionable. I'll be honest with you. The daily looks questionable. But this bottom here looks really, really, really nice. This bottom looks very nice on the chart. Because we had a low... We made a higher high, officially changing market structure within the range. We came down to make a higher low with a very bullish looking daily market cipher. And now we are attempting another leg up, attempting another higher high. Let's see if we have any other things to look at here that could help us out. Oh wow, okay. This is on log, not regular. All right, so we've got this log scale trend line here. All right, so yeah, I would say I would say the same like 
this thing here. I mean, it's really hard to say like what our high is because this is obviously a not a real high. I would say maybe our highs are like up here, around 23 cents, which is giving us approximately 400%. Wow. Yeah, so I would look at this in two ways. Like number one, we could look at this for a long-term play. A long-term play is basically we look to accumulate here, and our stop loss only has to go down to negative um, negative 0.028 cents, right? Just kidding. Trading view does that on log scale. I don't know why. Right. So for a long-term play, I'd actually think this looks good. Now again, I don't know anything about Casper. I should. Like I'm just being honest with you guys. I'm a technical trader. I the way I make money in crypto is I, I am a technical analyst. That's why I also trade stocks. I trade the S&P 500. I trade NASDAQ. I, I trade Bitcoin in the bear market. I trade Bitcoin. I make a lot of money when Bitcoin does nothing. I'm making a lot of money trading Bitcoin because I'm, I'm a trader. I trade the charts. I'm not a crypto guy in that sense. Or I'm here to tell you about the layer two solana blockchain integration and all this you know i don't even know what that is i don't even care i'll be honest with you it doesn't mean it doesn't mean it's better of me not to care right i'm just telling you guys where i'm coming from right obviously there's a lot of benefits to understanding these things because then you can really make a lot of money but that's not my style of investing really right i'm purely a technical trader here um I got into crypto for fundamental reasons, but uh, mostly for me, fundamentals include the four-year cycle of Bitcoin, which then puts money into the altcoins. So when I'm looking at these altcoin charts, I don't know. Is this a Ponzi scheme? I don't know. I don't know. But this chart to me looks like a good buy because we're potentially here going to get a 400% pump. And if we're DCAing within this triangle that is yet to break out, Taking for granted that the bull market is going to come. Taking for granted that the four-year cycle is going to play out the same way it always has. Taking for granted that these altcoins are all going to pump like crazy for no reason toward the end. This is a great opportunity for potentially new highs here, right? This is like a long-term play. This looks good to me. This has not broken out yet. So when people are like, what do you think about ICP? And we look at the chart and ICP looks like this. All right. To me, I'm like, well, I don't know if that's a good buy right now. Because Bitcoin's about to come to resistance, and we usually have a pullback before the halving. And altcoin season usually marks the top of a Bitcoin rally, right? Bitcoin pumps, ranges, money flows into altcoins, Bitcoin gets pulled back, everyone panic sells. I mean, it's, it's, it happens time and time again, right? But this is not looking like that, right? This is not broken out yet. Which means one of two things. Either it means it's going to break out very soon, and altcoin season continues, or... Maybe Bitcoin does get a pullback, all these alts get a pullback, and this thing just stays in the triangle and does nothing. Right? Well, then when the halving does happen in April, we get the breakout, and then we get the, the big move up, right? So, yeah, long term, this looks really good. Now, short term, just like the other one we were looking at here, we have ourselves a resistance that has been respected three times, okay? So, if we get the breakout of this resistance here, retest and then boom that's how a lot of these altcoins they've gotten the breakout they've gotten the retest and then boom that to me is a sign of strength we get the breakout we get the retest once we start to bounce again give your give yourself a nice little playroom on the stop and then we can shoot for some higher targets right on a short-term play here where would those targets be well if we're trading triangles you would always want to target significant highs on the chart right so we would target this high that we made back here in April, we would target this high that we made back here in April 2022, right? So this is potentially giving us a 100% gain on that breakout in the short-term play. The long-term play, we're talking 400 plus percent on that thing. So shout out to Jboy Bullish in the chat. Shout out to Bullish Vision. Oh, sh oh. shilling the mugs. Yeah, we do have mugs. We do have the Dolores mug. Polar Bear Man's a knife catching trader. I, I have that I have that disease as well, my friend. I do. Alright.
All right, let me see here. Shout out to Jacob with the super chat. Thank you so much. Can we look at Coinbase, the stock? All right, shout out to Hoodrich666. Can we look at DYP? Shout out to Lava Nacht. Polkadot. Yeah, we could look at Polkadot. All right. Yeah, we'll look at Polkadot. We'll look at Polkadot. DYP and Coinbase. So Dot's already gotten the breakout, right? Dot's already broken out. So this to me, our next resistance on Dot is uh, $10.64, right? We've gotten the breakout and we're well on our way. So look, the way I'm looking at this is if we're gonna keep pumping, the only opportunity right now is to look for a local long up to this area, which really is, it's another 17, 18%. That's a great move. I mean, especially if you're a day trader, but the big gains potentially are over because Bitcoin's about to hit massive resistance. Dot's about to hit massive resistance, you know? So we have to keep that in mind here. Could we keep pumping? Of course, but, uh, the majority of the gains have already taken place here. So let's go ahead and pull a fib low to high. If I was going to look for a long on this, I would look to come down into this zone right here between this golden pocket and 786. The reason why is because if this sideways range is our area to look for trades, which I believe it is, okay? We have some patterns forming here that I love to trade. So first of all, we formed our first high, we took the high, we get to move back down to the low of the range. Now, at the low of the range, we have a low. And I believe that if we come and take this low, it could result in a bullish bounce. So an opportunity I would see here is come and take this low, and they get to move to the upside with the bullish divergence on the one hour time frame, right? This is just classic, right? This is this is how I love to trade. Make a high, take the high with a bearish divergence, which we have, short it down, right? That's how I got into my Bitcoin short from literally the, the exact top, setup given in advance because we made the high, take the high with bearish divergence, easy short trade. So that happened here on Polkadot. So now if we take the low with bullish divergence, right lose it reclaim it with the candle close then we got with the bullish divergence as well we got ourselves an easy entry an easy stop loss and a target of a new high potentially potentially up to the uh the ten dollar and fifty cent zone that's a really nice trade setup actually all right so you want to look at coinbase coinbase the stock is that true? Before we look at Coinbase, we have to look at DYP. DYOR, baby. DYOR. I'm about to tell you about this new altcoin that I'm partnering with. It's called Safe Pump. Guaranteed to only pump no matter what. I'm telling you, without a shadow of a doubt, Safe Pump is going to pump no matter what. If you buy it now, you're going to be a billionaire. But don't listen to me, guys. DYOR. All right? I've already done the R, and I'm telling you, Safe Pump is definitely gonna pump, no matter what. And I, trust me, but don't trust me. D Y O R, baby. Hmm. I love some some Pellegrino. They say it's imported from Italy, but it's probably toilet water with some carbon dioxide in it. All right, Dipius, Dipius. We're going to be looking at DIPS. Now, DIPS has a really, really, really nice uneven butt cheek pattern here on Market Cypher B. Okay. Look at this. Wow. Girl, you do your thing. You're looking fine. All right. Looks like you've been doing some single leg squats and deadlifts only on the left side, baby. And then on the right side, neglected muscular imbalance. Now, 
I don't know anything about Dipeus. All right, but uh, I would say this. This is pretty important support resistance flip here. This is pretty important support resistance flip here. Upward potential. 500, 600%. Downward potential. 67%. So, I let's just let's just take a look at how that would look as a um, as an actual like setup here, right? Let's we're, we're gonna cancel out some of these wicks. We're gonna go more at the closes. That's a seven to one risk reward, assuming our stop loss goes below the lows here. Okay, so there's a lot more upward potential for this than downward. Diapias, I don't know much about it. Okay, but I would say this. We have an important support resistance flip. We have money flow getting higher. If you're into this thing, if you believe in the fundamentals and you're looking for some kind of an entry here, well, there's two options. Option one is literally start buying now. If you believe that this thing has a, a good future, there's much more upward potential than downward potential. And the truth is looking at this chart, we could very easily squeeze above all this very, very, very fast, right? Option number two, wait for a breakout a sign of strength taking out the last local highs support resistance flip and then wait for a retest at around like a golden pocket or something so breakout retest and when that happens now you have yourself a very nice risk to reward ratio where now potentially you're making 19 times more reward than risk instead of seven times more but I don't know what this is. I don't know what Dipeus is. Dipeus, 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 Dipeus. I don't know. All right, we're looking at the Coinbase stock. Okay, so Coinbase, <laughs> wow. So dang bullish, right? And uh, yeah, this is one of those ones too uh, uh, that's also pumping like crazy right now. So let's just take a moment to appreciate how how nice this move is because this thing has respected the technical analysis like crazy right we made a really nice low here bullish divergence come up get a retest right from the Fibonacci golden pocket make another higher high and then we come down retest right into the Fibonacci golden pocket and now we have broken out of this range and we are in a very nice uh, bullish breakout money flow looking very bullish Coinbase is probably going to keep pumping as we go into the bull market. Let's be honest. So where's our next resistance? Well, let's pull the fib from the high to the low. And uh, really, our next major support resistance is coming in at around, you know, I would say $214. Let's do a 0.5. Yeah, okay, so around $200, I'd say. That 50% retrace right there. Let's let's pull some more volume here. Let's take a look at this here. Yeah, right around that 200 to 218 zone. That's gonna be that's gonna be pretty significant. Um, resistance right around here i mean it's just a support resistance flip it's the 50 percent retrace it's the value area low of that range uh from the last kind of bull market um so yeah i would be interested in maybe getting a move up to here and then maybe getting a bit of a pullback and then the question is where do we pull back to well if bitcoin does get if Bitcoin does get a big pullback, right? Let's assume Bitcoin hits 50K at the same time Coinbase hits 200. Then we have this Fibonacci golden pocket right here at around $120, which is a massive level, right? Order block, one high, two highs, Fibonacci golden pocket retest. This would actually be where I would then look to get in uh, on more of a swing trade play because we're, we're basically coming back down for the retest here um, and then potential blast off which I do think we will in the bull market right 
Alrighty. Shout out to Patrick for the super chat. All right, can we look at IAG? Yeah, we can look at IAG. And then we're going to have to head out because I have to... Uh, I got family duties, guys. I got some family duties. You know, praise God that I have a, an amazing family. All right, look at IAG. Wow. Well, I'll be honest, I don't really know what to say about IAG. Besides, if you had some from May, congratulations on your crazy gains. And if you had some from May and you didn't sell on this capitulation wick, also congratulations on your gains. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't really know what to say about this thing, man. Um, because I don't have a lot of market structure to work with. We're basically in price discovery mode. We have this crazy capitulation wick here. Let's ignore the wick. And let's just use like a trend-based kind of thing. So I'd say like if we get another move to the upside, we'll probably end up around the 2618, give or take. That's our next trend-based fib level. I don't really know what to say about it. I don't have much market structure to work with here. Um, even locally, I don't have very much to work with here because this thing could drop so quick. There's just so much liquidity below here. These highs look like garbage. So honestly, I, if I if, th if this was a Bitcoin chart, and if I, if I don't even know what this is, but if this was a, 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 a chart that I was trading, I would, I would be interested very much so in shorting this, I'll be honest, because all these highs, just do a liquidity grab of the highs, lose the level, bearish divergence, money flow coming out, and we could take it back down, maybe all the way back down to like this support resistance flip. That's my honest thoughts on this. I, I don't know what it is and I don't really like the chart. Um, this doesn't look very tradable to me, but the only thing I see here that I would be interested in is actually taking the highs, shorting it back down toward the last support resistance flip that we have. Um, I don't know anything about it. That's a 62% drop. So that probably wasn't very helpful, but thank you so much for the super chat. Um, yes, I do fit genius. I do think Bitcoin can take the highs again. All right, guys, I got to head out, but may God bless you all in Jesus' name. Even if you're not religious, I still pray you and your family are super blessed. Thank you guys for liking the stream, letting the YouTube algorithm know you want to see more of these juicy live streams. And guys, may the Lord bless you and protect you and shine light upon you and have grace upon you. And may the Lord turn his face towards you and give you wholeness. And I'll see you guys in the next stream. Peace.